Hello and welcome back. Till today we have seen how to read CSV files and complex data files. Today we are going to read JSON files in Spring. We are also going to parse complex JSON structures. We are going to look into some important JSON functions such as to JSON, from JSON, and we are also going to explore array data. We are going to look how to write JSON schema easily just by looking at the data. Now, if you have made till this far and you are liking my content, thank you very much. If you wish to buy me a coffee, here is a QR code from PayPal that you can scan. Thank you. Let's move on. I am in my JupyterLab environment. But before we can begin, you must know what is array or list data type or what is a struct or map data type in Python. If you are unsure of this, I will recommend you to go back and refresh your Python skills. Here is the data with which we are going to work today. We have two JSON files. One is a multi-line JSON file and another is a single line JSON file. Here is the JSON data with which we are going to work today. This JSON data is spread over multiple lines. If you can see, it started from line number one and it ended on line number 17. It implies it's a multi-line JSON. Now, what do we have in the data? We have order ID, customer ID, order line items, which is actually the line item of the items. You can see we have two items. The first one is item ID I001, which has a quantity of six and the total amount is 102.45. Similarly, we have another item with item ID I003, which has a quantity of two and amount of 2.01. We have a contact field, which is again an array field, which is also a list in Python. We have two contacts for this customer who has this order. So this is a multi-line JSON. We can have the same JSON spread in a single line. You can see in this, we have one line item which contains the whole JSON payload. Now you understand what is the content for both the files. Okay, now to start with, let's generate our Spark session. Here is our Spark session ready. Let's go ahead and read the single line JSON first. So we know to read a file, we just need to create a data frame with read and we have to specify the format. Let's do that. We'll create a data frame df underscore single line, which will be spark dot read dot will specify the format as JSON and we will load the file which is inside data input order and we'll load the single line JSON. Let's run this. Okay, now let's see the schema. We'll type df single dot print schema. If we run this, awesome. You can see Spark has automatically identified the JSON schema. Now, it has identified contact as array field, which contains elements which are long. Now, our phone number is identified as long. Customer ID is identified as string. Similarly, order ID as string. And now we have the order line items, which is again an array, which contains element, which are struct, which is also known as dictionary or the JSON payloads, which contains amount, which is a double, item ID, which is a string and quantity, which is a long. Now we can see the schema properly. Let's see the data. Great. We can see the contact, which is an array field here. We can see the customer ID, which is C001, order ID 0101, and order line items. But you can see the order line items are identified but not expanded. We'll see how to expand this JSON in few moments. Before that, let's read a multi line JSON file. So to read the multi line JSON file, we'll create a data frame df underscore multi and we'll again read at Spark dot read dot format and we'll put the format as json and we will load the file data input order multi-line but spark out of the box does not support multi-line json file load so to do that we have to specify an option which is option multi-line which is true let's run this Let's see the schema. Nice. It is the same schema that Spark has identified. Let's view the data. Great. We can see the same content. Now, we have seen in both the cases, Spark has automatically identified the schema and expanded the values for us. It has distinguished contact, customer ID, order ID, and order line items. But Consider a case we don't want to expand the data and keep it in a single column. How can we do that? Let's read the single line file and we will try to keep it in a single column named value. We'll create a data frame df equals to spark.read.format which we will specify as text. And we will load the single line file which is data input order single line. Let's run this. 
let's view the schema. Nice. You can see it created only one column. Let's view the data of that column. We'll put df dot show. Great. You can see it has kept the raw data as is. You can expand this so to view the data. Let's do it. We'll write truncate and put it as false. Nice. You can see the whole JSON payload is kept into the same column, which is value. Okay. Till now we have seen that whenever we read the JSON data, Spark automatically identifies the schema. What if we have to enforce one schema to this particular payload? Consider we only want to read order ID, the customer ID and the contact. Can we force this schema on top of this payload? The answer is yes. Let's do that. Let's write our schema, which is schema and we'll put it as customer ID, which is string, which will put the order ID, which is also string and we'll put the contact, which is actually an array field and we'll specify it as long. Let's read the data frame again. We'll put it as df schema and we'll do it as spark dot read dot format. We'll specify it as JSON and we'll specify the schema this time. We'll put it as schema and we'll load the multi-line file. So we'll put data input order single line. We'll read the single line file. So we'll run this. Let's view the data. So we'll write df underscore schema dot show. Now you see we have just read only the three required columns from this particular payload. So if required, you can enforce in schema. What if we want to write a complex scheme? You can also do that. So for this schema, whatever we found in the multi-line, let's write our complex schema. So I'll paste this here just to view the cell. And we'll write our schema. So we'll put it as schema and we will write our schema. We'll copy this contact, which is an array field. So we'll write array. Now the element for each array is long. So we'll put it as long for the array. Now our next element is customer ID, which is again a string. Our next column is order ID. We'll put it as string. And our next item is the order line items, which is again an array. For this, we have to put this triangular bracket and inside this, each element is struct. So we'll write the elements for this array is struct. And for each struct, we have three values. The first one is amount, which is double, followed by item ID, which is string and quantity which is long. This is our whole schema. Let's again read the data frame with this schema now. So we'll put df schema new and we'll write as spark.read.format. We'll put the format as JSON and we'll enforce the schema. Let's make some changes. We'll specify the contact which is array of long as string. So our phone numbers are string now. Let's specify this. So we'll put a schema and we will load the single line file again. We'll data input order single line. Let's run the schema first. Okay, we forgot to put the double quotes. Let's put the double quotes and rerun this. And now let's run our data frame. Let's view the data frame schema. So we'll put data frame schema dot new dot print schema. Awesome. You can see this is an array of string now. Let's view the data. So We'll put df schema new dot show. Nice. You can see the same data printed, but this time our contact is string in place of long because we enforced a schema as of our choice. This is how you can specify a complex schema using simple string statements, just like we do for our normal DDL. Now, Spark has provided us with some important functions related to JSON that we can use. First, we will see the from JSON. The from JSON is basically used to parse a JSON payload that is stored in a column. But we also need to specify the schema for that particular payload. We have already created that schema. So let's copy the schema. Nice. Let's import the from JSON function from PySpark SQL functions model. So I'll do it from PySpark. Great. 
if you remember we already have a data frame which contains the whole payload in a single column so i'll just show you that so i'll write df.show you can see we have the whole json payload in the value column for the data frame df we will expand this one with the schema let's do that so i'll write df expanded we'll use df dot we'll create a new column called with column i'll write it as parsed and i'll use from json and i'll put the column which is df dot value and i'll pass in the schema which is schema if i run this nothing happens let's view the schema i'll write df underscore expanded nice if you can see the parsed column contains our parsed json data let's view the data so i'll just type df expanded dot show nice our parsed column contains the parsed json payload from this value column we'll expand this in few moments before that we will see one more function which is to json to json is used to convert a parsed json data into a string json data so to do that we'll write a data frame called df unparsed and we'll again read parsed json data so our expanded data frame contains a column which is parsed so we'll use that column to unparse the data so we'll put it expanded dot with column we'll put the column name as unparsed and we will write as to json and we'll put the column name from the expanded which is parsed so i'll put as df dot and dot parsed now before we can do that we have to import the to json let's do that let's run this cell now let's view the structure so i'll put as df unparsed dot print schema great we have one new column called unpassed which is actually a string column let's view the data for that particular column only i'll just write df dot unpassed dot select great you can see that json payload let's truncate let's switch off the truncate put it as false great you can see the whole payload as unpassed so now you understand the use of from json and to json if you want to parse a data from a particular column using a schema we need to use from json but if you want to do the opposite if you have a parsed data and you want to convert it into a string you will need to use to json now we have already parsed the data but we have not expanded or exploded the data when i say expanded means extracted the value for each of the columns or we have not exploded the data means we have not expanded the array fits let's do that so we have already have a parsed json data frame so we'll use that df expanded i'll show the data first so i'll do as so we have a parsed column let's view that column so to do that what i'll do is i'll write one data frame called df1 i'll use this expanded data frame so what i'll do is to view the columns we know we have multiple columns in this so what i'll do is i'll write select parsed dot star the star will expand all the columns which are present in this parsed as a struct data let's run this we can see the data now i'll write df underscore one dot show nice you can see we have expanded the columns customer id order id order line items now we need to expand this order line item as well and within this order line item we know we have amount item id and quantity but before that this order line item is an array which contains structs now we first need to explode this array so to do that we'll write another data frame df2 and we'll do it from the df1 so we'll say df1 dot we'll write with column and we will say expanded line items and to do that we'll write explode which is our column which is order line items now before we can run this we need to import explode let's do that let's run this now let's view the data i'll write df2 dot show great you can see two lines now if you remember our order line items contain two order lines the item id i001 and i003 so the explode has exploded that particular array column into two records now let's expand this expand line items which contains amount 
item ID and quantity. To do that, I'll again write a data frame called df3 and I'll expand this. So I'll write df2 dot select. Now we have to select all the columns. So I'll put contact. We will use the expanded line items. So we'll put expanded line items dot star. If we run this, nothing happens. Let's see the value. So I'll write df dot show. Nice. You see that particular column is expanded. What if you need to expand only one single column? Say, for example, I just need to extract item ID. So we can just do that by writing item ID in place of star. If I run this, you see only item ID is extracted. But if you need to extract the quantity, you just put QTY and you run this, you see you extracted only the quantity field. So in a particular struct, you can use dot notation in order to extract a particular field or you can put a star in order to extract all the fields. Now, we still have the contact as an array. We need to explode that as well, right? Let's do that. We'll write our final data frame, which is df final. We'll write as d3 dot. We'll write one column called with column and we will put that as contact expanded. And we will again use that explode because it's an array field. We'll put the column name, which is contact. And let's run this. Let's view the schema first. I'll write df final dot print schema. Nice. You can see the particular contact column is still an array field, right? But we have expanded that to contact expanded. Now, before I write the so command, what do you expect? What will be the number of records now? Pause the video and try to guess. Now, if you have guessed the number as 4, you are right. Each record for this particular contact will be exploded into 2. Let's view the data. We'll be a final dot show. See, we have 4 records. These are the expanded or the exploded data. We still have the contact column. We can drop it. We can write dot drop and we can put the contact column name and we can again run. This is our expanded data or you can say the flattened data. This is how we also expand or flatten a JSON payload or a complex JSON structure. I know this is too much to learn, but practice can help you to understand this concept very easily. Pause the video and try to understand wherever you are finding the things complex. This was all for today. I hope you learned a lot today. Feel free what you like and what you don't like in comments. I'll definitely try to check and improve the content accordingly. Thank you. Keep learning, keep growing, keep sharing.